when you have problems of temperatures, at the end of the, of the day, you have problems on the head and you need to remove the head and replace the head gasket and repair the head or replace the head in some cases. The head is, is critical. The head is the element located on top. The head is the element located on top and this is the block. This is the block of the engine. And uh, the head is located here. This is the head. This is the head. Or other common problem is if the head is broken, if the head is cracked, like the head that, that you have on the screen right now, uh, when the temperature of the head increase, that crack increase, and uh, probably the coolant enter in the combustion chamber, and uh, you have white smoke. We are going to talk later about that situation. The life of a diesel engine depends on the compression of the engine. Why? Yes, remember, if the compression is not good, when the piston is going up with the valve closed, the piston compress the air appropriated? No. If the piston not compress the air appropriated, when the piston reach the top that center, probably the temperature and the pressure is not the appropriate pressure and temperature in order to ignite, in order to produce the explosion. Ah, when the piston is going up and all the elements additionals are in good condition, the compression is perfect. And when the piston reach the top, the center, probably the temperature and the pressure is the appropriate pressure and temperature in order to ignite when the, when the fuel enter in that uh, preheated combustion chamber. In this particular uh, picture, let me explain quickly that picture. Uh, I have the piston, this is the piston, and the piston is connected with the connecting rod and is connected with the crankshaft, this is the crankshaft, and uh, the crankshaft have the gear, the red, the, the red gear, and is connected, is engaged with the gear of the camshaft, the green, and uh, this is the lobes of the camshaft, the lobes of the camshaft are in permanent contact with the lifter, the lifters are hydraulic or mechanical lifter, we are going to talk later about that and those, those pipes, those long pipes are the push rods. The push rods are hollow, hollow elements that allow that the oil pass through the, through the pipe internally. On top you have the rocker arms and the rocker arms in the other end touch the valve. Ah, when the loads, when the loads of the camshaft lift the lifters, uh, this rocker arm goes down and open the valve. Okay, remember the valve, they have a spring here in order and a retainer. Right now I am going to explain in this video the procedure to remove the spring and the retainer in order to keep the valve closed. In marine application we found that the most common head is the flat head or we are going to use overhead valves or we are going to use overhead with the camshaft on the, on the head. Those are the most common heads, and uh, let me explain all of them in detail. In a typical, in a typical uh, diesel engine, uh, the head is flat, and you have a, a intake valve here, exhaust valve here, and uh, on the on the block, on the block, uh, you have the piston, and the piston have this pocket. The piston have uh, this pocket and uh, this is the connecting rod and the connecting rod is connected with is connected here with the crankshaft with the crankshaft all right the, and, uh, the injector normally is located here in the middle in between both valves all right and uh, when, uh, when the piston uh, is going up and the piston reach the top of the center, before of that, just before of that, uh, the injector spray the fuel and uh, produce the explosion. In this pocket, the explosion, the explosion is concentrated in this pocket and transmit the final force directly into the connecting rod and improve the performance of uh, the piston and the connecting rod. And the force transmit on the connecting rod is 
this maxim. In the example that uh, you see in this moment on the on the screen, I am removing uh, the head on a on a V12 uh, Detroit diesel engine. Uh, that engine is an MTU engine. Uh, that engine, uh, the heads are individual. Uh, in, in that engine, you have one head, one head per cylinder, one head per cylinders, and uh, and uh, and it's easy to repair the engine because you re remove an individual head and you can repair that cylinder in particular. If you see that head, uh, the head is completely flat. It's a flat head and, uh, and, and in that particular example, we are going to replace the intake valves because uh, a recall of the manufacturer uh, indicate that those engines originally from the, from the, from the, the manufacturer uh, they have a problem with the intake valves. The problem on the, in, in that particular engine was bad quality of the intake valves. When the intake valves are working uh, uh, in contact with the oil and the fuel, uh, the, metal, the metal is eroded, uh, is affected, is corroded, and, uh, and uh, destroyed the liners and uh, destroyed the head of the piston. For that reason, uh, uh, MTU, Detroit Diesel, uh, recall uh, the majority of the boats with those new engines uh, in order to replace the intake valves and we are going to do that process in different sections of this video. Uh, this is uh, an overhead valve uh, with the camshafts on the head. The camshaft on the head. The camshaft is in direct contact with the lifter. This is the lifter and uh, the lifter compress directly the valves and open and close the valves. Uh, you have one camshaft for intake and other camshaft for exhaust. Okay, the intake camshaft open the intake valves and uh, here is located the intake manifold. This is the intake manifold. And here in those ports are connected, are connected the exhaust manifold. The exhaust manifold, uh, those are exhaust valves and those are intake valves. It's uh, two camshafts. Uh, one camshaft dedicated for intake valves and the second camshaft dedicated for uh, exhaust valve. This is very common. Uh, the majority of the manufacturers have designs like this with the camshaft on the head. Normally, uh, the tolerance in between the valve and the, gal and the valve guide should be uh, inspect each time that you disassemble the head. Uh, we are going to uh, check the diameter the diameter of, of the body of the valve and we are going to check the diameter uh, of, of the valve gaddy. And uh, if uh, the diameter is not according with the tolerance recommended by the manufacturer, it, in other words, if in between the chap and the valve and the valve guide there are too much play, it's necessary to replace the valve guide and replace the valves for a new ones. Alright, in order to avoid that uh, uh, oil enter in the combustion chamber, uh, the, the, the most important uh, element is uh, verify that the tolerance in between the valve and the, and the valve guide be according with the manufacturer specification. And additionally, uh, on top of the valve guide is located uh, the valve uh, seal. The valve seal is a, is a, is a spring compressed uh, seal located uh, in the body of the valve and enter in the valve guide according with the picture that you have right now. Uh, in this moment, in the video, we are uh, removing we are removing uh, the the valve guide uh, seals because uh, we are going to replace valves and uh, valve guide seals. Those valve guide seals are very important in order to avoid that a, a small amount of oil enter in the combustion chamber during the normal operation of the engine. What is the symptom when those valve guides are in bad conditions? Is when, when you have blue smoke when the engine is running. Blue smoke when the engine is running is probably because you have too much play in between the valve and the valve guide where on, the, on, on, on those, those materials and also because that that seal is damaged.